everybody. Welcome to another unboxing video. It seems to be, gosh, the only thing I do. I guess my major talent is buying tarot decks. But uh, I received a... Uh, I've got about a dozen unboxing videos that I need to do, but I'm going to start with this one first. I think you'll really enjoy it. This is from Modern Eden Gallery, and I'll put a link in the description box down below. This is the Slow Tarot. Wow, really beautiful. So let us see what we have here. This is a Lacey Bryant production. And this one is going to be a lot of fun to show you. So this is the Slow Tarot by Lacey Bryant. A richly designed tarot deck featuring stunning reproductions of 78 original oil paintings by San Francisco Bay Area artist Lacey Bryant. The Slow Tarot is the result of a personal art project spanning over six years. As the artist dedicated herself to creating an original work of art for every card in the deck. So God bless the artist. I can't imagine the amount of dedication it takes to produce a tarot deck like this. This comes in a lovely cardboard box with the little cutouts. Well, no, no cutouts, but I mean it's easy for you to remove the uh, deck. There's a little book here, guidebook, The Slow Tarot by Lacey Bryant, copyright 2019. So this is your typical little guidebook. There's a foreword, an introduction, seekers and guiders, the reading, interpretation, the major arcana, and a little bit of information on each card. There are no images of the cards in the guidebook. And I kind of like that um, they talk about the cards numerically, like they speak about the aces in general, the twos, the threes, the fours, the fives. And I enjoy uh, studying tarot in a, in a numerological sense, so I like that. The sevens represent enthusiasm and ambition, or I like to think of them as representing confidence. The eights represent strength and power, or movement as we come to think of them as uh, in traditional tarot decks. Most of the eights are shown as movement or stagnation of movement. The nines represent self-knowing and fortitude. I kind of think of the nines as accomplishment. And then they give you a little information about the court cards. The king, the knight, the queen. The queen is mature and feminine. The queen embodies the qualities of the suit rather than acting them out. Their focus is inward and their style relaxed and natural. A king is mature and masculine. They are doers whose focus is outward on the events of life. A knight is the questing nature of the suit, which I like that explanation because I think of knights as action cards. And a page is the de declarative aspect of the suit. They act out the quality of the, of the suit with pleasure and abandon. To me, uh, pages are similar to uh, aces. They kind of represent the energy of the suit. So that is the little guidebook. Next, we'll go through the cards. I'm going to set the box aside here. Okay, we've got a little plastic encasement there. Alrighty. Gosh, this deck is very pretty. The cardstock is nice. 
it's very fluid when you attempt to try to shuffle it. It's not too thick. The cards themselves are kind of linen-y. This is just the kind of deck that I like. So here are the backs of the cards. Very pretty. We've got cups, swords, pentacles, and wands all represented there. A couple of moths. The backs are reversible if that's important to you. The same either direction. The deck itself is really, it's like nice for me. It's lovely because I can fit it lengthwise in my hands. I have rather small hands, I believe. I can shuffle it. I'm not going to put the cards back together because I want to show them to you and I've still got them in order. But just demonstrating that it's a nice fluid deck. Okay, so moving on to the cards themselves. They're beautiful. I don't know why the deck was named the Slow Tarot. I guess they're meant to be taken in slowly because they're such artistic, uh, beautiful works. Here's the Fool. Love that. Got that sense of abandon. Got the dog there. Got the little, the white rose. I love how the sun is behind the figure of the fool. Really gives you a nice, uh, a nice sense of the card. I love the coloration, kind of all the warm colors. Very pretty. Here we have the magician. Love that she's got the as above, so below, and it looks like a young person, possibly a young girl. Kind of a Harry Potter-esque looking card. I love the red roses. There you can hear my canaries in the background. Sometimes when I film at night, you can hear my chow-chow snoring. I think to myself, wow, I bet people really wonder what kind of uh, creature that is snoring there. Here we have the High Priestess. That's a beautiful card as well. Instead of the pillars, we've got a couple of sphinx-like figures. Very nice. And you can kind of pick up on these cards. They've got a uh, linen finish. You can kind of see it in the light there. So they feel very nice. They're a very nice quality of card, which I love. If a card stock is cardboardy or too thick or or uh, sticking together, it's a deck that I'm never going to use. So cardstock is like number one on my importance list. Number two is the artwork, and this deck has them both. So here's the Empress. Beautiful, beautiful. Out in nature. The mother. The pregnant belly. Got the water. Here we have the Emperor. Very nice. We've got the Ram. He looks very, uh, very official. <laughs> the Hierophant. I love how the little birds are the supplicants in this card. It gives it a, kind of a different feel. It softens the card a little bit. But you still get that feeling of, uh, you know, convention and conformity, religious hierarchy. Okay, here we have a really beautiful lover's card. One of the prettiest I've ever seen. Really beautiful. I love how they've got the two hands pressing against each other. Gorgeous. And you can see the card numbers are up in the corners. As well as having the uh, name of the card down below, we've got the numbers up in the corner there. Five, six, and it's Roman numerals. So here we have number seven, the chariot. I love that because it's sort of a Wizard of Oz feel. You expect Toto to be in the in the little basket there instead of books. The chariot. Oh, what a beautiful strength card. Gosh, that is delicious and gorgeous. Look at her dress. Oh, look at the, the lion. It's just absolutely subservient and adoring of this lady. She's got her strength going there. The hermit, very nice, kind of a kind of a sunset feeling there. He's in the woods 
with his lamp. Got a raven in the background, beautiful tree. Nice hermit. Here we have Fortuna instead of the Wheel of Fortune. The wheel is behind her and she's got those uh, lucky coins there tossing around. Fortuna for Wheel of Fortune. And she's actually kind of winking her eye, if you can see there. It's like, hey, give it a shot. What have you got to lose? <laughs> Here we have balance instead of uh, uh, justice. So I'm not quite sure on this card what the art is meant to uh, portray. I can see she's holding a candle. She's got a candle in one hand, a cup in the other. So we've got the uh, fire, water. And then of course she's on earth and we've got a bird for air. So I guess that's kind of an elemental card. Expressing balance between the, the four elements. Okay, here we have the hanged man. Gee, he's even got his hands sort of bound up there. So pretty typical hanged man. Okay, the death card. It's got a kind of a whimsical touch with the suit that he's wearing. He's got the little... Uh, Plinkas, I think you call those, the little chimes that you ding when you meditate. Interesting card. The poppies and the figures like people with, looks like people with umbrellas in the background. Sure does. So that's an interesting card. Into each life some rain must fall. And this is one of the cards I really loved and wanted to get this deck for, was this Temperance card. That's just beautiful, the, the tea being poured and the tea table there with the ladies being served, or at least one lady. It looks like that might possibly be another lady there. But that's a really beautiful representation of temperance. And I like the, uh, the arched window behind that kind of gives you the idea of balance and moderation. Very nice. Here we have temptation instead of uh, the devil. And I like this card because they're representing someone who's uh, given into the vices in life. She's drinking. Looks like some kind of an orgy going on there. Too much food, a little too chubby, I can relate to that. So there is temptation for the devil. Next we have the tower, which is another great card. I love when artists do something original. The house of cards that's going to fall down at the least little disturbance. So that is a really great tower card. I love it. Here we have the star, really a nice, another great card. Because back in the day when uh, mariners used to uh, navigate the seas using their sextant and go by the stars, really pretty. Charting your course. The figure, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, but it could be either. It's just beautiful. Okay, here we have another really gorgeous card, the moon. Every one of these cards is just so beautiful and so well done. Got the dog and the wolf. There's no lobster there, but you don't really need it. Very nice. Got lilies down here. Here's the sun, beautiful sunflowers, lovely card, little girl, no baby on a horse, yay, I like that one. Okay, next we have judgment, this is a really cool card, it's the mirror in the mirror in the mirror type of a thing, and she's judging herself, so you've got a 
do some self-reflection and evaluation and see what you really need to be doing with your life. Judgment. Here's the world. We've got the candle in the middle representing the sun, I would believe, and then all the planets surrounding. Very interesting. The world. Okay, next we have... Now we're going into the suits, so I think I'm going to arrange them four by four like I enjoy doing, so I'll be right back. All right, so here we have all the aces together. Here is the, uh, of course, wands. Beautiful ace of wands. It's got dandelions. Wishes come true. Sending out that wish to the universe. Here we have a beautiful, beautiful ace of cups. Look at that with the red roses. There's a dragonfly. Really pretty. Ace of swords. I absolutely adore hummingbirds. And of course, birds represent the suit of swords or air. So, perfect. And then look at this... Uh, Really pretty white lily there, too. That's beautiful. I really like that. And then here we have the Ace of Pentacles, where you have that sense of opulence, uh, wealth, jewelry. Uh, we've got a key there, a couple of keys. Flowers to represent the natural world. Dice for chance. So there's our beautiful Aces. Next, the twos. I like that two of wands. He's really plotting out his course there. Two of cups. Perfect, perfect, really nice. Two of swords. And here we have the two of pentacles. She's kind of juggling with the shower overflowing behind her there. She's trying to do too much and ignoring the important things. So there we have our twos. Next, the threes. Let's see, I'm trying to get rid of the glare from my lamp. There, that's a little better. Three of wands. Very typical Rider Waite looking image. I love the poppies in there. They're setting out on that journey. The three of cups, a very traditional Three ladies celebrating, enjoying camaraderie. Here we have a very traditional Rider Waite Three of Hearts. Actually, it goes back further back than uh, Rider Waite. This is back in the, um, gosh, hundreds of years prior. The Solabusca Tarot shows three swords through a heart. And I don't think it represented the Three of Swords. I think it re represented the Three of Hearts if I recall correctly. But anyway, it's become kind of a traditional modern thing. Every deck has the Three of Swords as Three Swords Piercing a Heart. It would be nice to have more original cards on the Three of Swords, original artwork. The Three of Pentacles, really beautiful. Gosh, look at the detail. These cards are absolutely stunning. Okay, next we move on to the fours. Four of wands. Nice traditional looking card there. Four of cups. Very sweet. She's saying, hey, check over here. I have a really hot and spicy cup here for you. Don't be bored. <laughs> no boredom allowed. Here is the Four of Swords, a traditional rest, retreat, reflection. And look at this. Look at the expression on her face on the Four of Coins. She's gathering her energy, gathering her resources, and she knows what she's going to do with them. You can tell by the look on her face. All right, next we have... Five of Swords, which I really, this is really cute. The five kids kind of sword playing with their wands or sticks. So it can be, indicate conflict, but it can also be a playfulness. Something is, uh, something's being shaken up, but it may not be that earth shaking. 
a four of cups, a five of cups, excuse me. So we have that loss, regret. Oh my gosh, what have I done? Very traditional rider weight. Five of cups. Here we have the five of swords. And five of coins. So it's sort of a figure with the hands begging for alms. There's a little bowl there. At first glance, it's hard to tell what this card uh, shows because it's just kind of a dark figure there. And I don't know what these little colored uh, things are supposed to indicate, but there's that's a person begging. So hard times, troubles. Okay, on to the sixes. We've got the six of wands, victory, six of cups, nostalgia, happy memories, six of swords, sailing from the choppy waters to the smoother, better place ahead, and six of pentacles, or coins. She's got bounty and she's able to share very happy card. Seven of Wands. A lot of determination, but he's making his way. Making his way up the ladder. Seven of Cups. You have to make your decision. Be confident about it. Don't be swayed by illusions. Oh, those things in the cups are really cute. We've got a kitty, a locket an apple. Huh, interesting. Seven of Swords. Craftiness, stealthiness. And the Seven of Pentacles. So it looks like Fortuna there. trying to increase your luck. This guy's uh, got a card behind his back, so good luck with that one. You might have a little trouble. Moving on to the eights. Eight of wands. Love that. Not just wands, but we've got uh, some eagles carrying them forward. Really a sense of courageousness there. Eight of cups. Moving along. That's beautiful. Here we have the Eight of Swords. Very typical Rider Waite image. And the Eight of Coins. Craftsmanship, accomplishment. Good job. I love the dog in there. Really nice. Okay, the Nines. Nine of Wands. So determination, perseverance, you've really achieved what you wanted to do. Hasn't been easy, but you've done it. Nine of Cups. I love her cup collection there. So she's got her book of uh, photographs. A lifetime of accomplishment, memories, collecting. You get the sense of warmth with the kitty, kitty cat there. I like that card. Very nice. Here we have the Nine of Swords. Very typical Rider Waite image. And the Nine of Coins. That's really pretty. Look at the colors. So vibrant. She's even got a beautifully colored bird there. Some sort of a little love bird maybe rather than the falcon that we normally see in the Nine of uh, Coins, a lady out in the garden in the Rider Waite style. And she's got a falcon on her hand and everything's blooming around her and she's gives you that sense that she's accomplished quite a bit financially and she's enjoying the fruits of her labor. And this is an indoor scene, kind of giving you the same feeling. Got the pretty flowers behind outside the window. Okay. I always like to see the Nine of Coins because that's one of my favorite cards. Here we have the Ten of Wands. Overburdened, done too much, 
Gonna cut back on those chores. Ten of Cups, the happy family card, beautiful home, kids playing in the yard, the parents looking on, great happiness. What could be happier than that? Ten of Swords. That's a very typical Rider Waite looking Ten of Swords. Okay. And we have the Ten of Coins. Wow, that's really cool. I love the clock in there. It gives you that sense of time and the generations. And we've got the money and the jewelry and threads. I don't know. Look at the snake back there. That's interesting. The family photo. All right. Let's move on to the court cards. These are all the pages. They're all represented by young youngsters. Page of wands. Page of Cups. I love that. That is so sweet. Look at the fish. I don't know how he got a goldfish in the ocean, but uh, it's a fish. <laughs> Here we have the Page of Swords. And Page of Coins. Isn't that adorable? That represents, this card represents a new venture, uh, financial or or farming or something like that and she's got a lemonade stand a little entrepreneur I love that card okay next we have the Knights Knight of Wands so Knights are the action figures and he's on the go he's a fiery goer a fiery doer Knight of Cups the more romantic gentleman Knight of Swords, Altruistic Warrior. Oh wow, isn't that a beautiful Knight of Swords? Love him. And here is the Knight of Coins with his jazzy car ready to take out his date on Saturday night. Okay, then we have the Queens. Look at that Queen of Wands, isn't she cool? I love this card. A couple of uh, pet dogs there. Interesting. Okay. The Queen of Cups, of course, near the ocean with her cup there. She's kind of got a mermaid feel with her aqua dress, her shell headdress. Look at this Queen of Swords. She's very severe looking. Very interesting. I love the bird and the moth. Kind of hard to see the bird because he kind of blends in with the rest of the uh, card there, all the dark colors, the black dress. And we have the Queen of Coins. Isn't she a lovely thing? She's even got the rabbit that you would traditionally see, and the, there's a little white kitty. I don't know what these animals are on the throne she's sitting on. They look kind of like uh, possums. Interesting. She's got a bowl of fruit, fruit and coins surrounding her. Wonderful. Okay, and then we have the kings. The king of wands. Very powerful man. King of cups. A little more playful card. It's the guy everybody loves to party with. The king of swords. It's a very accomplished uh, communicator. But he can be a little cold and stern, but he's a good guy to turn to when you need help with the project. King of Coins. 
kind of matches that opulent queen of coins that we saw. Let's put them together here. A couple of great cards, aren't they? Love it. Maybe they'd go better this way. No, they don't really face each other. But they don't need to. Really, really well done. Okay, so that's my quick run through of the deck. I hadn't seen a lot of these cards previously. Uh, and I love this deck. I love how fluid it is. I love almost all the images. I'm sure I'll be using it quite a bit. I'll put a link in the description box below if you'd like to uh, purchase this. So that's the Slow Tarot. Thank you. Talk to you next time.